Hi everybody. Uh, my name is Carly. I'm going to give folks a couple minutes to get here, get situated. Um, so the pleasure chest is based in education. This workshop is Call Me Mommy um, because Mother's Day is this Sunday and uh, not all mommies have to be your actual mother. Um, a little bit about the pleasure chest. The pleasure chest has been around since 1971. I actually manage the West Village location, which is their OG location um, in New York City. It's been there strong and mighty, small but mighty. Uh, we were one of the first sex shops to not black out our windows. So we really wanted to reach people where they're at and make a really comfortable situation where Queer people, women, marginalized folks, anyone really seeking pleasure-based sex education or an unjudgmental environment can come shop and really be accepted without any judgment. We really pride ourselves in offering free workshops in New York, Chicago, LA, and online so that if you're not in any of our cities, you can join us via the wonders of the internet. So... You know, all that good stuff. Uh, a little bit about me. I've been with the Pleasure Chest for almost six years. Uh, I left very shortly but came back because of the amazing company that it is. Um, I run a blog. It is dildo or dildon't.wordpress.com. Um, feel free to check that out and feel free to check out my social media, all of it on Facebook, Instagram, um, Twitter. <laughs> Um, it's all makeup and sin. Uh, feel free to ask questions. I have the camera facing at me. I'm all alone in my apartment besides my dog. Um, I will say if you hear the exotic sounds of the Bronx, I apologize. People have been partying and screaming all afternoon. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, so this class is about feminine dominance. Um, so I'm going to dive right into that. Um, basically, this class is not going to, or this mini workshop is not going to tell you how to top your partner. It's not going to tell you what you like or what your partner likes. What, like topping is not a paint by numbers. It's a completely personalized experience that you have to figure out what you and your partner really are interested in and what you want to partake in. So this is really just like about finding your feminine energy and embracing that and harnessing that and tapping into that and making that the most fun you can have by yourself like as just a powerful femme or topping a partner whoever that is uh so i want to talk a little bit about common misconceptions about bdsm and feminine dominance and kink in general uh so some popular um, misconceptions about all of those things is pain has to be involved in anything that's kinky uh, it's definitely not true. If you have ever used a blindfold or ice or any number of things, congrats, you're kinky. Um, and it didn't involve pain unless you wanted it to. Um, so kink, as anything else, is a complete spectrum. So it can involve pain. Um, pain can be fun for both the giver and the receiver, but it doesn't naturally, it doesn't have to include pain. That's completely up to you and the person that you're partaking in these activities in. So don't assume that just because someone is like, I want you to top me, that that means that pain is going to be involved. Um, you have to check in and really figure out what that means for folks. Um, another really common misconception about kink is that only women or femmes bottom, and clearly that is not true. That's why we're all here talking about this. Uh, feel free to ask questions or add your own thing if you feel um, so inclined. Uh, basically, uh, not only women bottom, not only men bottom for like female femme tops, it's really anyone who wants to be a top and anyone who wants to be a bottom. Gender doesn't tell you who you're into. Gender doesn't even tell you like what's in someone's pants. It's really no one's business unless you're, you know, gonna fool around with them. But the point being is that anyone can top and anyone can bottom as long as you both consent to it. Uh, something is wrong with me if I'm into BDSM or topping or bottoming. Um, that is not true. There used to be lots and lots of years of people thinking that like you were on, 
if you were into kink or pain or any sort of masochism or sadism that you were psychologically damaged that's not true um look it up there's lots of studies um be careful what sources you're reading because anyone can find any sort of information on the internet that aligns with what they want to prove but um it's not true um abuse uh kink is not abuse the main thing that differentiates between kink and like fun sexy time is consent there are things called consensual non-consent which means like if my partner says i can get them intoxicated and then put things in their front hole they have previously consented to that, so as long as things stay within the parameters of things they've consented to, I have free reign to do that. So the difference between me doing that to a drunk person that I don't know and a person that has previously consented to it is the consent. So as long as you have consent with these acts, even if it's consensual non-consent, you're good. It's not abuse. Bottom line. Um, a lot of folks fear think that um, people that participate in bondage and discipline, BDSM in general, um, can only um, enjoy non-kinky sex or like can't enjoy non-kinky sex ever again. And um, it's just not true. It's whatever your desires is. There's lots of people that only do kinky sex. There's lots of people that only do vanilla sex. And there's lots of people that like to play around with what flavor of the day they want to play with. So like, just because one day you're like, I want you to suspend me from the ceiling and whip me around doesn't mean that every day has to be that adventure. So keep that in mind that once you've done something doesn't mean that you have to constantly do it. It's up to you. Um, a lot of folks think that uh, people that are into BDSM fear intimacy, which is really the complete opposite. Um, folks that participate in BDSM, um, generally speaking, have a lot of intimacy connections because you have to really communicate and trust your partner to participate in a lot of these activities because you have to give a lot of trust to someone that you're putting your bits and pain and whatnot in their hands. Um, another myth is that um, inten uh, desires will intensify over time. And again, they can, they don't have to, if they do, as long as you're doing it like consensually and like safely as possible, like intensify to your heart's desire or stay at the level that you want. Some people will get into spanking and be only into spanking and that's completely fine for them. So it's really just a spectrum of your own desires. Um, <laughs> another common uh, misconception is that uh, kinky people aggressively try to recruit others. I can tell you that that is definitely not true. Um, I personally don't ever like to recruit people. I want people to come to me with their desires and like be genuinely interested in trying things. And I feel like most folks that do that are on the same page. If someone is uh, pressuring you or aggressively trying to recruit you, that's a red flag and you should probably avoid them. <laughs> um, another red flag is folks that say that they have no boundaries. That's a huge red flag because every single person, no matter how extreme their desires are, has a boundary. Whether that is um, they won't have sex with people that are underage because you can't consent. They won't have sex with animals because they can't consent. Like, even if it's something as like that's their only boundary, that's still a boundary. Folks need to have boundaries and they need to be able to communicate with the, uh, that with you. So if a submissive hits you up and or like vice versa is like, oh, I don't have any boundaries. And it's like, okay, so I can castrate you. Clearly, usually that's not the case. So just keep in mind, like they're either super new to BDSM or like don't have the language around it, but it could be a red flag or it could be them being really new and they need to read a little bit more, learn a little bit more, or go to a workshop from us. <laughs> um, yeah, so those are some of the common misconceptions. Feel free to add some if you would like. Feel free to chime in. Feel free to also like hit me up on Instagram after and ask questions. Um, so why do it? Why participate in BDSM? Why participate in topping or bottoming or power exchange? Why do any of that? Um, Ultimately, it's pleasure. We do things because they feel good. Even if something is feeling bad at the time, like let's say you're taking a lot of impact and things really, really hurt, at the end of it, 
all is going to be like pleasure because you've made it through and it feels really good. Um, if you are doing impact or any sort of sensation play, um, you get an endorphin rush, any sort of pleasurable activity is going to give you like an adrenaline rush, which is going to be really fun for your body. If you are doing like impact play and you're hitting someone's butt, you're also giving some indirect genital stimulation by like hitting their pelvis. Um, the clenching of the muscles while someone is being spanked or the reverberation of the actual hit itself can feel really good in the pelvis and the pelvis has all those like nerves that are connected to your fun bits. Um, power giving and receiving, not taking it, um, can also be really fun to play around with. You're sharing intimacy and trust and it could just really enhance experiences. Uh, fantasy is another really great way. Let's say you've always had a fantasy of sleeping with your mother and that's clearly a really big taboo. If you find someone who lets them, lets you call them mommy and will like spank you if you're naughty or what have you like congrats you're successfully having that fantasy come to life um in terms of topping in general like tapping into a new and powerful self is also really satisfying um learning to embrace my dominant has also helped me say no in other situations where I might not have said no before so think about it like yeah, it's fun to take control in the bedroom, but also like bring that into your everyday life. Be the powerful femme you want to be. Um, and for me, and maybe a few other people, um, the costumes and the props are all really fun and exciting. So if I can dress up like sexy Daenerys Targaryen and top you, like there's nothing more fun for me. So, <laughs> you know, explore your fantasies include all of the five senses like make the costumes or props match um enhance the smells in the room the lighting uh just everything around it like really think about what's happening and how you can enrich the scene um now i really want to talk about what the word feminine brings to mind for folks um so i just want you to think about like common words and phrases that like will come to mind when um folks say feminine. Uh, lots of popular ones are confident, poised, sexy, regal, beautiful, mysterious. Um, some folks will get really specific like high heels or lipstick or for me glitter. Glitter screams femme for me. Um, and now I want you to think about what the word like dominant, especially in the context of like femininity, means. So thinking about like women that are typically perceived as dominant, how could they be described by folks? A lot of popular words that have come up are bitch, temptress, conniving, moody, bossy, and high maintenance. So you see there's a dichotomy there. Ultimately, feminine energy is a mixture of light and dark, day and night, sugar and spice, <laughs> Um, accepting all the attributes that lend to your dom space will help, help you become a fully actualized dominant. Embracing the darkness can help open you up to new adventures and sensations and partners and all different fun things. Um, our limitation like, is rooted in our anxiety. So if you let go of your anxiety, it can really build character and open you up to new experiences. Um, curiosity, rejection, desire, pleasure, those are all things that can come out of anxiety. So negative things can come out, but also really positive things can come out. So don't let like negative things dissuade you from trying something really fun. It might be a really enriching experience. Um, so there are some different topping styles. Uh, thinking about the Call Me Mommy class, uh, the this one is based on the caretaking um, archetype. So um, it's kind of thought of as the gentle femdom. So it's a caretaking dominant that someone is going to like love taking care of their submissive. So like I'll text someone and be like, hey, did you eat today? Did you take your meds? How can I support you? How can I make your day easier? Um, because I'm gently topping you into being a fully functioning person. <laughs> um, 
someone into the gentle femdom or mommy dom or even like fem daddy um, might enjoy like bathing their submissive, giving lots of praise or pet names, um, lots of cuddling can happen. Um, clearly the mom's going to be the big spoon with their little baby little spoon. Um, and yeah, like they're calling the shots and they're leading the scene, but it's going to be a really caretaking and gentle experience. Um, and while we're on the mommy topic, I want to point out that my nails are mint green. If folks don't know about the hanky code, the hanky code is... Uh, it started out as a way for gay men to flag their desires when gay sex was really, really illegal. So depending on um, the color of the bandana and which side they had it on would signal what kind of sex they were looking for. So when it became more like queer inclusive and kink inclusive, they added a lot of different colors. So mint green is for folks either um, that are mommies looking for a little or like littles looking for their mommy. Um, so if you see folks with a mint green hanky on the left, they are a mommy. And if they have a hanky that's mint green on the right, they're a little that needs to be scooped up by some mommy, help them. <laughs> Um, in that same vein of like caretaking, um, encouraging is another really good type of dominant. I like to think of that in terms of like the doms that have created like kink centric, um, workout classes. So folks that will like kind of dom you into a being a better person kind of. Um, the encouraging dominant is similar to the caretaking persona, but this type of personality focuses more on personal growth and development of the submissive under their care. So where, like, if I'm taking care of a little, I'm kind of just essentially taking care of a really sexy baby. <laughs> um, and the encouraging dominant is going to be someone who, like, has an end goal, isn't just, like, checking in. Um, my favorite kind of dominant is going to be the pampered princess. Um, so this is more focused on the pleasure and enjoyment of the top. Um, so while encouraging, uh, and self-care dynamics are usually enjoyed as like sub-focused dynamics, the dom who wants to be pampered will be more of a top-focused dynamic. So getting like service bottoms that really want to like, rub your feet or do your laundry or take you out to dinner or buy you new things, like whatever that means. So it's a lot of like foot rubs, massages, baths, body worship, uh, depending on the arrangement, you know, money is always great. Like sending money to folks is never going to be turned down. <laughs> um, then we get more into like a sadist type. So if you like, um, giving spankings, if you really love impact play, if you have like, if you get really turned on watching things that like involve pain, then you might be a sadist. Um, this kink is definitely for causing pain and discomfort. It really turns you on to see that happening. Um, and despite the kink, you don't really want to break the submissive. It's really about seeing like what they can take and bringing them to that next level. Um, so it's really a matter of like, finding the things that bring you pleasure and bring the submissive pain to bring you pleasure. So lots of things like that would be spanking, bondage, impact play, electro play, those types of things. Um, and cruel is another really um, fun one to explore. That one's more humiliation based. So that could be anything from like cuckolding to forced feminization or any sort of things like that. So it requires a lot of trust. Um, things that you're telling somebody to humiliate them, you still want to check in that they're okay being humiliated with those things. Um, there's lots of things that like, if I was going to explore that, that I would be okay with. And there would be words that I would be like, absolutely not. Um, even in a humiliating context, that might be kind of fun for me. Like, there are certain words that would be triggering. So you want to check in with your submissive first. Um, a yes, no, maybe list that maybe includes words that are off limits is a really good way to check in with folks. 
Um, but like this kind of dominant or cruel one really likes to tear the submissive down and they kind of want to break them. So it's, you know, this isn't the only options for people, but this is a good kind of like stepping point to kind of figure out like, what kind of top do I want to be? What kind of activities do I want to do? And finding people that fit into that for you. Um, some really good ways to explore that besides like, going to classes like this and like reading about stuff is like checking out erotica. We have a lot of really great erotica on our website that is like compilations of short stories. I've gotten some really great ideas for scenes in some of these authors books. So like I love the idea of making um, someone else's written fantasy come to life in my own personal life. Um, also checking out porn, many vids, uh, clips for sale. You're all supporting porn and the money is going directly to the performer. Um, so finding porn like that and seeing new things, you'd be like watching someone else do it. And like, yes, porn is a performance. Like don't expect it to be as like edited in your personal life, but it can be really fun and enriching and give you fun new ideas to try. Or just like some really hot, like spank bank fodder for yourself before you're gonna go see somebody. Um, Tumblr used to be really great for it, but like even, like that life, any sort of resource where you can explore other kinks is going to be a good way to kind of get the ball rolling and see like, what else can I be into? Or like, what other archetypes can I look for? Um, so about BDSM in general, some of the most important tenets are um, safe, sane, and consensual. This means everything is done as safely as possible within the constraints of what you're doing. So like, some things are inherently dangerous and you have to accept the risks that come along with that. But like, if you are playing around with rope, you want to make sure you have safety scissors. So if you have to cut someone out for whatever emergency or an itch on their nose, whatever it is, um, you can do that safely. Um, uh, sane just means negotiations are made from a neutral place of sound mind and not while judgment is clouded by like, drugs or alcohol um, or anything like that or even being really turned on you never want to negotiate when you're really turned on you want all the blood to be in the big brain not the little brain so just thinking when like you're on a neutral ground like what activities do I want to do and consenting to them when you're in that space um, and consensual just means that everything has been agreed on prior and that there's going to be no gray areas of like I didn't agree for you to do that um, rack is risk aware consensual kink. So that just means that like you're recognizing that adults are participating in these risky behaviors and that nothing we do is 100% safe. Like I could have this ring light fall on me right now and hit me in the head and I die, who knows. Um, but you can still take precautions to reduce the risk of harm and engage in them reasonably and responsibly. It's like you can't not try things just because it might be dangerous, but you should be mindful and try and anticipate any risks. Um, and safe words are a really important tool in BDSM. Um, the way safe words work is if you're doing a scene, especially one that's like based in saying like, no, stop, don't, like you don't really want the top to stop. So you wanna be able to communicate like, hey, I actually do really need you to like slow down or stop in a way that's like not gonna break the scene or like in a way that's going to be very clear to the top so they can help you out with that. Um, so really popular way to do it is just like the stoplight system. So like red is stop, yellow means like slow down or ease up and green is like, yes, go. Um, another fun one that I like to do is I heard this in bar trivia coming up with a word that uses A, B, C, D, E, F. Um, it's also a fun like long road trip game of coming up with new words but like we came up with bread faced which is not a word you would typically use in any sort of sexy time so if I ever need to be like like ow that hurts or like you're whatever and like we're in a scene where I'm already saying maybe no like saying bread faced lets the top know that like hey I really need to stop so coming up with a safe word that you both are on the same page with is really great for scenes but it's also kind of fun in social social situations so if you're like out to in the supermarket and you see someone you don't want to talk to you can tell your partner oh my god bread faced let's go <laughs> um 
and you want to really like communication. I know we've been like, I've been harping on it this whole time, but communication is super important. Um, people don't inherently know what they like. So finding out together can be really fun. Um, but also being kind to the folks that you're telling, unless like they're into humiliation and they want you to tell them in a really like terrible way, like being nice to folks is generally a good rule of thumb. So, um, you really want to communicate like what you enjoy and what you don't enjoy so that you're both on the same page. Um, you won't know unless you ask and you won't get you what you won't get what you want unless you communicate that. So like closed mouths don't get fed. So just be very clear in what you want before, during and after. Um, and so like even aftercare, like you can demand like I need cuddles right now. Um, and one thing to keep in mind is like giving folks f uh, positive feedback is really effective because we're in a vulnerable state, like whether it be that you're naked or you're tied up or you're blindfolded, whatever it is, you really want to be mindful that um, you're not going to hurt someone's feelings. So there's always an easier way to say things. So like, instead of being like, ow, stop, that hurts, you're doing it wrong, or like, be like, hey, could you ease up a little bit? Could you go a little to the left? Or can you switch to a different paddle? Or whatever it is, like, frame it in a positive way. It's good for the tops and the bottoms. Like, be kind to each other. It's a good way to live. Um, and ask questions. You can make it a form of dirty talk. Does this feel good? How do you like that? Um, what could you use right now? There's a lot of different ways to incorporate that into dirty talk. So yes or no questions. So would you like it if I get the flogger? Do you want more of me tickling you? Is my hand in your butt good? Like those sorts of things. So those are yes or no. Um, either or is a fun way to kind of see like where you want the scene to go. So would you like the cane or the crop? Would you like the magic wand or the rimming plug? Would you like some juice or more spankings? Like any of those things could be like a sexy check-in. Uh, there's also uh, open-ended questions. So if you want your submissive to really like get talking to you and tell you like what would really like get their engine going, like this is a great way to do that. So like asking questions that require more of an answer then like yes or no is going to be an effective way to do that so like how do you feel about what's going on right now what would rock your world right now where do you want this scene to go how are you feeling like those types of things are going to be really really great tools to check in and make it like sexy dirty talk um so some different like I'm not going to go into impact play. I'm not going to go into any of that, but like thinking in terms of like sensation play and like the tools that you already have in your house are really, really great way to kind of jump off your journey into topping folks. Um, your goal should be shared pleasure, different sensations, hot and cold, rough or smooth, uh, smooth or rough, um, uh, firm or light and fast or slow, that sort of thing. So, Massage candles are a really, really great tool to do that. Um, I talk a lot about like making sexy lighting. I like like blue light bulbs if you see my light. Um, you know, it's flattering for me. Um, <laughs> but a massage candle is really great. We sell a bunch of them. Um, they're all soy based, so they get warm but not hot. So when the oil melts down, you can pour it right onto the skin. So you can do it as like a fun like massage thing. You could be the pampered princess and let your submissive rub you all over with lotion. You can have your submissive tied up and like be rubbing them down before or after impact play. Or you can just like have it just be a nice like warm up for yourself. Like massage candles are wonderful. Um, feathers are the typical thing that folks think of when they think of like sensation play. Uh, thinking about the skin and like where it feels really good to like caress lightly. So like the inner elbow, the crease of the thigh, the back of the knee, the back of your neck, anywhere who would really hurt to get a tattoo is gonna feel really good to caress lightly. And skin craves variety. So like feathers are really wonderful. We sell these like silky and tangle ties that you can run on the skin. There's also like all these things in your house. If you have a loofah, you can run that on someone's skin. If you have like cashmere gloves or wool gloves or 
towels, wet washcloths, whatever it is, like blindfold someone and have them guess, like, what am I touching you with? What am I caressing you with? Could be a fun game of like, have you earned this reward or this punishment? Um, but also it's going to awaken all the skin and kind of put you in your body and make everything really fun and interesting. Uh, we also sell a bunch of like stimulating gels. We sell Foria with CBD in New York City and Chicago because THC is not legal here yet. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure in LA they might have the, the THC version. I'm unclear, um, but call them and ask. <laughs> Um, basically how like the stimulating stimulating gels work like I love this liquid one because it's all natural there's not gonna be any weird side effects um, but you can put them like a lot of them are overly gendered packaging um, but tissue is the same in lots of folks' bodies so like the lips the nipples the clit the head of the penis are all like places you can put these stimulating gels that basically will draw the blood to the surface and make things really sensitive and tingly so it's a really easy way to like tease your submissive if they're tied up because those body parts are now going to be begging to be touched and you can do with that as you will so you can touch it to your heart's content or you can blow on it or ignore it or whatever you will so it's a really fun way to kind of play with sensation with the like the erogenous zones um really interesting vibrators that are cool are like the really fluttery ones i know that i think we had like a giveaway for the volta it's just a really like it has these thin strips of uh, silicone that shake really quickly so like it's a really good teasing sensation for like nipples clits under the head of penises like under the um under the balls, like between the, the taint, basically. <laughs> Sorry, it's been a long day. Um, there's also a ton of remote control toys. So basically, if you want to have virtually any body part vibrating, you can have a G-spot one, you can have a butt plug one, you can have a cock ring one, you can have a dual stimulating one, you can have just a clitoral one. Like, there's a million and one toys that we sell from, like, We Vibe and vibe and um lilo has like remote control toys that you can like put on your submissive and like vibrate them from across the room so like just giving you some ideas to play around with uh wands which look like this fellow right here are some of my favorite um because rope can be tied around their neck and like attached to a body so like those are a fun way to play around with vibration um edging is another fun way to play around with submissives what edging is, is basically bringing folks to the brink of orgasm and backing off and bringing them to the brink and backing off and bringing them as many times as you have the energy to do that until you finally let them release and they have a huge orgasm. Or you never let them release and they're wanting you and begging you and texting you and all these fun things. Uh, sensory deprivation is one of my favorite things, if you've heard any of the noise in the background. Um, <laughs> My neighborhood is loud. If um, Even if I'm alone, sometimes I'll put on noise-canceling headphones to kind of drown out the noise. Um, you can put noise-canceling headphones on a submissive. You can put, like, music to either, like, turn them on if you know that they're, like, super into Beyonce or music that they hate if you're trying to punish them and put on, like, Dancing Queen on repeat or whatever it is. Um, and you can put a blindfold on. So the more senses you take away, the more intense everything becomes. So if you can't see or hear where your partner is, everything, every touch, every kiss, every caress, every like missed touch or like absence of touch is going to be way more intense than if they could see and hear everything that's going on. So keep that in mind. Um, Wartenberg wheels, which are little pinwheels, are really fun to play around with sensation. They look a lot more intense than they actually are. So it's fun to kind of like be like, guess what I'm going to do with this? And then it's just like running on the skin and tease them. Uh, nipple clamps are a great way to play around with different sensations. Um, the broader it is, the more distributed the pressure will be on the nipple. Um, the more pinpointed it is, the more intense they tend to feel. Um, typically they all have something that will hold them open a little bit and like you control how much they clamp on you or your submissive. Um, and they don't typically hurt that much when they're on. What's meant to hurt more is when they come off. If you've ever had the experience of your leg waking back up after it's fallen asleep, um, that's a sensation you get when you take the nipple, um, nipple clamps off. All the blood comes rushing back and it's very intense. Um, 
also thinking about like temperature play is a really fun way and easy way to do things. Uh, glass toys, stainless steel toys, all these things hold temperature really well. Um, so you can put them in the fridge. You can um, run them underwater. We actually sell this really fancy like sex toy warmer called the Warm. Um, so you can put your toys in and then all your toys are really warm. So you can run them on the skin as like a massage tool or you can put them in someone's body. When toys are warm and you're trying to do like bigger penetration, when things are warm, it helps muscles relax. So you can really help your submissive take a bigger toy if the toy is warmer. Um, also, we all have a free sex toy. It's our mouth. If you take a sip of cold water and then put your mouth on someone, now your mouth is a cold sex toy. If you take a sip of warm water and then put your mouth on someone, now your mouth is a warm sex toy. We sell a lube and a massage oil warmer from Warm as well. And it's really fancy. You like put your hand under and it like spits out some lube that's nice and warm. It's very luxurious. Um, you can also like put a bottle of lube like in a warm cup of water to kind of warm it up a little bit. You can um, put the lube or the massage away in the freezer and play around with different sensations like that. So it's all about like finding different things to do and kind of change things up and really make things more intense. Um, so that's all I have for you. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about the workshop program and see if folks have any questions. But check out um, pleasurechest.com slash events. We have events in New York City, Chicago, and L.A., we have a few more live streams. Check out um, the calendar for that. I'm sorry, I don't know off the top of my head who's going to be teaching next, but definitely check that out on our page. We have the calendar up. Um, yeah, go to our website. Check out the toys that I was talking about. A lot of them are really fun. Check out my website. It's dildo or dildon.wordpress.com. And I'll see you on my Instagram at makeup and sin.